Hey there, welcome back to the show. I'm your host Kyle, and once again, sorry for the uh, somewhat shoddy audio quality of the recording of this. I'm still on location, so to speak. Uh, But still, while out and about, I still like to check out movies, and I'd like to talk about The Fall Guy. Uh, I guess... Based on the uh, <laughs> the old uh, TV series of the same name, the television series uh, created by Glenn A. Larson, uh, known for uh, Battlestar Galactica, Magnum P.I., all those kind of shows. Uh, my brother was a huge fan of uh, the TV show. Um, I, I still remember he had the, the Fall Guy truck. I think pretty much all, all uh, TV shows back then had some kind of a, a vehicle, the A-Team had their van, uh, Dukes of Hazard had their, had the General Lee, uh, Knight Rider had Kit, and so on and so forth. Anyway, but, uh, this, uh, latest, uh, TV show into a movie, it's written by Drew Pierce, and directed by David Litch, uh, David Litch, uh, having directed Bullet Train, uh, he was the, I always remember, he was the co-director of, um, the first John Wick movie, I uh, can't remember the name of the other director escapes me at the moment, but uh, David Leitch went on to direct Atomic Blonde, um, Hobbs, uh, Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw, Deadpool 2, and the other director went on to do the uh, the John Wick sequels. And, uh, well, this is his latest movie. It's The Fall Guy. Uh, it stars Ryan Gosling as Colt Seavers, who is The Fall Guy. He is the stuntman. And... He is called back to work on a movie directed by his one-time love interest, uh, 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 Jody Moreno, played by Emily Blunt. Uh, Of course, um, Colt Savers is the stuntman for Tom Ryder, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, who is the star of this new movie made by uh, Emily Blunt's character. Now, the name of the movie escapes me at the moment. It's something like Metal chaos or something something pretty generic and that as as far as uh movies that are being made within movies this is uh pretty generic stuff it it's um it's sort of like a uh cross between um cross between dune and uh mad max fury road it's actually the the movie it's this this movie the fall guy actually takes place in australia which was interesting. I didn't know that um, going into it, and I guess for it, it really it has a lot to it that is really like a love letter to the whole profession of stunt performers and stunt actors and and that kind of thing. And if I was to be really generous, I would say that it kind of. Um, being set in Australia and um, kind of about stuntmen and all that kind of stuff, and basically for stunts to actually be such a major part of this film. Like, there is a lot of practical effects in this film. In fact, I would say that's probably the film's greatest asset, uh, is just how much, how focused on uh, using actual stuntmen and stunt and uh, practical effects it is. Uh, If I was to be really generous, I would say that there's... um, it's kind of uh, also kind of a love letter to the movies of Brian Trenchard Smith. Uh, Brian Trenchard Smith was an, uh, an Aussie director who uh, made movies like uh, The Man from Hong Kong. And he kind of, whether I'd say pioneered, but he um, he kind of, he made a, a sort of a sub-sub-genre, uh, <laughs> a sub-genre from the Ozploitation uh, franchise, uh, I think called, um, I believe it was called Stunt Exploitation, where he made several movies that were really heavily based around stunt performers. So the movie itself was uh, starring a stunt man, and the movie was usually about a stunt man being drafted by the CIA or whatever into going on a mission and. Uh, yeah, so he, he did quite a few movies like that, uh, movies like Stunt Rock and uh, Death Chasers. Uh, he did quite a few of them, and the problem is a lot of them were really bad. Like they didn't really have much of a much of a story to them. Um, 
which uh, it, it it pains me to say it because the man from hong kong is actually like probably my favorite australian movie uh, like as far as like guilty pleasure or just like my the one i consider to be the most fun it, it's probably my favorite australian movie of all time and usually when you buy that movie on blu-ray or whatever it, it'll come with like several of brian trenchard smith's other films as special features um and you think, oh, great, wow, it's going to be like a, a movie marathon. But, yeah, really only Man from Hong Kong is, is really the only one that's really worth watching. And I, I say, I, I connect that to The Fall Guy because, yeah, the whole thing of, um, uh, yeah, this movie being stunt, uh, really focused around stunt performers and stunt uh, actors. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't help but, uh, draw the comparison when so much of this one was set in Australia and and that kind of thing, uh, but I think I'm I'm probably being just a little bit too generous because I I the movie never makes reference to it and I'm not sure whether the people involved making this movie were are even aware of films like Death Death Cheaters or Death Chasers or Stunt Rock or, or any of that stuff. I'm not sure. I it, it the fact that they filmed it in Australia. I don't know. It it very likely was just a uh, a byproduct of um, of post COVID being uh, yeah Australia being one of the first uh, countries that uh, people were able to film movies in. Um, the problem that I had with this movie is so much of it is really based around the uh, love story between Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt's character. Uh, there is a story, obviously the main, the main plot of the movie, uh, or what should be the main plot of the movie, is uh, Colt Sievers being uh, drafted by uh, uh, producer Gail Meyer, played by Hannah Waddington, Waddingham, uh, basically to go searching for Aaron Taylor Johnson's character, Tom Ryder. The superstar has uh, vanished off the face of the earth. And... So Colt Seavers has to go searching for him, but at the same time he has to kind of keep it secret from uh, Jody, his uh, one-time love interest, because if the whole movie falls apart, then basically her it'll be her big break uh, going up in smoke. So it, he's trying to reconnect with uh, Jody after a uh, separation that they went through. But at the same time, he's trying to track down Tom Ryder and to find out what exactly happened to this uh, this Hollywood superstar. Now, the problem is that so much of the Fall Guy is heavily, heavily focused on the love story between Colt Seavers and uh, Jody, and the problem is that it just wasn't very interesting. Um, there's a lot of meta narrative to the story. Uh, relating to the film that they are making in the Fall Guy, um, and th- how that relate, how that story um, reflects the relationship that Jody and Colt are going through themselves, and they keep bringing up uh, about the the third act uh, of the movie and having trouble with that, and I don't know, maybe people don't always get together, and and all this kind of stuff. And it was so damn boring. Uh, and the, I mean, I, I could say that it's probably the kind of movie that would... Uh, I think it might appeal to a different kind of audience than these types of movies usually do. And in that way, I could... Um, I'd say that it's it's probably like a a, a positive. Uh, it pro- This movie will probably appeal more to women than a lot uh, of other big dumb action movies would maybe more than a lot of the uh, the fast and furious movies or uh, even some of uh, david leach's other films would have but so much of this movie is based around this love story and i never felt any reason to actually care about the uh, the relationship between colt and jody and jody i keep wanting to say judy but it's jody um the reason is that well I mean, uh, Colt, of course, being the protagonist, he's kind of a goofball, and Jody is presented as being a brilliant director, and we keep being told how amazing she is, but, and of course, Colt 
is really in love with her and really wants to get back together with her, and Jody was hurt by the way that Colt kind of uh, cut her off from his life and their past relationship. Um, the, but other than the two actors being really attractive, and of course they have chemistry, both of them are known for playing uh, in romance movies, Ryan Gosling and, and Emily Blunt, of course, the two uh, great actors for those types of movies. So they have the chemistry together. But as far as the characters go, I don't see any reason why these two, why I should care that these two are together, other than the fact that both ha- both actors are attractive, which of course they are. But that that's about it. Um, the subplot, the, the whole I, it shouldn't be a subplot. I guess it should be really the main story of a, of Colt trying to track down Tom Ryder and what's going on there. That all suffers as a result. Um, not a lot of the film goes for two hours, and with so much of it focused on the love story, and then they still need to cram in comedy, they still need to cram in the whole action set pieces, all that kind of stuff. Because of that, there's not a lot of time to really focus on the rest of the story. And so, yeah, like I said, for a movie with so many explosions and so many cars flipping and, and all that kind of stuff, really, it was... I found it to be quite a boring film, uh, unfortunately. Um, even the, the things like the the antagonist character, um, once they are revealed, they're so underdeveloped that well, they've only ever been pre- uh, uh, presented as being this this self obsessed, uh, real douchey kind of uh, a character, and so when um, the the ending of uh the movie uh Thelma and Louise is brought up there's there's a part where uh Colt says oh it's going to be just like the ending of Thelma and Louise and the antagonist says oh but they died at the end of it and that actually kind of struck me and took me out of the movie and felt like well, that's really out of character because we've only ever been presented to this antagonist as in the, as being this one note uh moronic self-obsessed fool who doesn't really have any understanding of anything other than himself and so yeah it that it, like i said it's just there's so many uh problems of this movie that just come down to i think the writing the focus on the romance uh storyline and even that even that starts off on a bad foot it's something that i i consider to be uh cheating when the romance relationship in in a film is not so much about two characters meeting and falling in love, but it's about the two characters reconnecting, two characters who already were in love, but they split up, and then the movie is about them reconnecting. It feels cheap. It feels like it's really cheating, because you've already established, oh, these people are already in love, and it's just about them... Uh, reconnecting with each other afterwards so you don't need to put in 50 percent of the work of a love story because the two characters already care about each other they've already met they've already gone on dates they've already been sleeping with each other all that stuff's already um you're already like midway through this relationship and that's the kind of relationship that we're presented between colt and jody which is another reason that it was just so bland to me so Really, uh, the stunt work in the film, in this movie, I think is, is obviously its, its highest selling point, and it's, it's probably the best, uh, the best thing that I would, uh, recommend the movie for. Even then, and I feel bad saying this as well, even then, there's only so many times that I can see, uh, cars flipping over, or rolling, or doing jumps in the middle of the desert, that I start to think that I'm just a little bit, um underwhelmed by it <laughs> um then when the movie gets into a lot more uh more elaborate stunt work uh there's, there's car chases through city streets and really elaborate eye candy stuff that kind of, that type of stuff is is top marks it gets it gets a uh, it, it th- that stuff is really good but uh but yeah it it, it, it kind of reminded me a lot of the movie um the Nice Guys, which I only realized how... Like, I was thinking while watching it, this reminds me a lot of The Nice Guys. 
Um, and I only realized about halfway through the movie, oh yeah, that starred where Ryan Gosling as well. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it's even though it's a totally different type of movie, it is a movie that is really undercut by the uh, the comedic um, efforts throughout, and just other issues that I had with the uh, with the plot and um, the focus of the story. So a little bit disappointing. Um, I think that this could have been just a big dumb action movie that I. I would have uh, really enjoyed. I really enjoyed David Leitch's uh, previous film, Bullet Train. I really love that movie, but I also kind of realized, yeah, but I haven't actually really enjoyed many of his other movies since uh, John Wick is is an outlier. Deadpool 2, I wasn't really blown away by that as other people were. Um, Hobbs and Shaw, I didn't really like that. Atomic Blonde had some cool moments, but yeah, um... Yeah, so I, I guess this is more on par for for um, where I where I found myself uh, liking other of uh, David Lynch's uh, other films. I think uh, Bullet Train is still probably his best uh, solo work, um, not not counting the the initial John Wick movie. But so to give this a rating, I'd probably I would probably still give this three out of five stars, even though I found myself being quite bored through it. Because all the elements are there, the actors are, are likable, the uh, the stunts are impressive, um, and there is uh, there is a lot of stuff there for, for audiences, I think, to enjoy, but yeah, it, it really didn't all come together for me, and I found myself being uh, quite disappointed in it, unfortunately. So, uh, three out of five from me, and yeah, I guess if you're looking for uh, the the current big action movie before Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes and uh, uh, Furiosa come out. Um, Yeah, I guess uh, check out The Fall Guy.